in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. As always, coming from the studios at First Star Logistics in a little different format today. We, Dave, man, we uh, usually do a call after the game, but um, right. like you, I happened to be in Jacksonville Monday night. Thanks to First Star Logistics, who sent me down with a group of our other uh, team members on the media side of First Star Media Group. And... Uh, Got us tickets to the game, and I had a chance to get down on the field. But what an exciting game! We usually, we do our post game call, and I missed it, so we wanted to do this today. Bengals 34 31 winners in overtime, and what a game by Jake Browning! It was phenomenal. I mean, when you look at it, uh, Jake Browning is one of seven quarterbacks in National Football League history to have a game where he completed at least 86% of his passes and threw for 350 yards or more. One of seven to ever do it in the history of the league. And he did it in his second NFL start. It's crazy. It's, it, it really is unbelievable. 32 for 37, 354 yards. Threw a touchdown pass of 76 yards to Jamar Chase. Quarterback rating of 115.5. And I'll tell you what, I, you, you have to tip your cap to Jake Browning, no question about it. He's the one out there executing. But what a masterful game plan was put together by Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, Dan Pitcher, quarterback coach, all the offensive coaches. Frank Pollock put together a masterful game plan in the running game. They ran the football for over 150 yards. I mean, that or 156 yards on 31 rushes, five yards a carry. The two tailbacks, Joe Mixon and Brown, 28 carries, 129 yards. I mean, they ran it, play action pass, the screen game. Uh, they got the quarterback out of pocket on boots, bootlegs, and nakeds and changed the launch point. Uh, they threw from the pocket. They went under center. They went shotgun. I mean, it was a very, very versatile, diverse game plan, and they attacked the Jacksonville Jaguars defense every quadrant of the football field in every way you possibly can. And it was just an outstanding uh, outstanding effort by Jake Browning and, and everybody else. I thought the offensive line – had maybe their best game of the year. I know uh, Ted Karras inside, he did not allow one quarterback pressure, and they threw the ball 39 times, a couple of gadget plays. But, I mean, Jake threw it 37 times. Not one pressure allowed by by Karras. Kappa allowed one. I mean, the, the inside, the interior of the offensive line was, was outstanding in this football game. Dave, for me, it was just a great week. First star logistics sent me and several other people down to their beach house right. in uh, Melbourne and – we made the drive up, and first off, you had a chance to be at that beach house. Oh yeah, uh, that is an incredible place to spend time. A showpiece, at. a and, showpiece. Uh, f- flying back into CVG uh, yesterday and uh, going home, I miss hearing the waves. Yeah, because instantly, and, and the house is just beautiful right there on the ocean. Yeah, we made that drive up there, and early uh, we had a chance to go to a tailgate before the the game even started, and. Um, with our guys Joe Goodberry and, and Malik Wright and, and so forth, and but you get the atmosphere. The, the number of fans was at that tailgate was unbelievable. And then uh, First Star Logistics also hooked a couple of us up with field passes, and we're down on the field in pregame. And we had a chance to talk to Coach Pitcher, and I had a chance to talk with Marcus Bailey and Doug Rossfeld and some guys that I know. And but you could feel it even before the game started that when the team came out and, and was out there in warmups. They were ready. They were focused. They had a chip on their shoulder as big as a boulder you can even think of. <laughs> and uh, there was a different bounce to their step. And um, you just, and, and they were feeding off of the fans that were there. And it was just exciting. And then for the game, the way it, you know, early on going. And like you said, watching Joe Mixon running two touchdowns and then seeing Chase Brown really for the first time get his opportunity to really show what he can do makes me excited because now you you can see the pieces coming together and and as you said jake browning what a performance uh 32 out of 37 i believe it was yep and three i mean you you would you could close your eyes and you would think that was number nine out there oh i know at at one point we were like is that Jake Burrow? Is that Joe Browning? <laughs> I mean, they were they were playing the same type of game. There's no question about it. You know, the, the fans, I think, were really, uh, really interesting because the players at the hotel, 
when the players were boarding the buses to go to the game, the fans, there was a big, big group of fans outside just sending the players off. And it, it just, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty special to see that, that group of fans down there. There were a lot of Bengal fans that made that journey. There's no question about it. And the Jacksonville fans were up in the bit because they had not had Monday night football in Jacksonville for 11 years. And uh, they were, they were ready to roll. And the Bengals fans were uh, ready to roll down there. It, it was, a, it was an electric atmosphere and it all starts, as you know, Dave, I mean, when you have a really good game, a good performance, like the Bengals had both individually by a lot of individuals and collectively as a team, you had a good week of practice and the Bengals had a solid week of practice. They had one of their best weeks of practice and they just lasered their focus on this football game and they blocked out all the outside noise. I mean, when you're a 10 point or more underdog in the national football league, they're expecting a blowout. I mean, that's a big point spread in the NFL because, you know, Vegas doesn't like giving them money away like that. And the Bengals overcame uh, all those odds and all that feeling. I mean, all, all it takes is self-belief, belief that you can get it done as a football team. And I thought, obviously, Jake Browning had an unbelievable level of execution in, in the football game. I thought Zach Taylor called as good a game as he's called. I mean, a couple of the gadget plays obviously blew up in, in the face. Uh, but the thing I liked about it, he was going for it on fourth down. Gadgets, he was aggressive. It was an aggressive mindset. Lou Anarumo was aggressive the way he came after the quarterback and pressured the quarterback some. They, 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 weren't, they weren't going down there playing not to lose. They were going down there playing to win the football game and trying to take the football game with uh, being having that aggressive posture. And I think the players fed off of that big time as well. That locker room was, uh, <laughs> was quite content to say the least after that, uh, after that victory, because the Jaguars, I mean, shoot, they were fourth in the NFL stopping the run. I mean, they were, they were allowing less than 90 yards a game on the, on the ground, like 84 yards a game or something like that going into the football game. And the Bengals crease them for 156 I mean, they, they were giving up four yards of carry. The Bengals got five. So they, uh, they were consistent with their, with their running attack. And I thought the, the, the duo, the combo of the power of Joe Mixon and then the explosiveness of, of Brown, that's a good one-two punch right there. And um, 28 carries for 129 yards between them. And, and you got Brown had 31-yard carry, a 15-yard carry. Joe Mixon had an 18-yard carry. I mean, they were getting explosive runs. So uh, Joe Mixon had a 28-yard catch on the screen pass. Uh, it was it was just well done. It was well orchestrated, well executed. Yeah, you know, for me, I got upset. I, at halftime, I went to the bathroom. You know how lines can be at the bathroom sure. in a stadium. And uh, for, kudos, that stadium is an awesome stadium. Everything seems to be right on top of you. And I think I was dreaming. I kept hearing Duval. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, the Bengals fans were coming back with the who day and that's I, the old Gator Bowl Dave. that's the Gator Bowl renovated five times yeah, I've been there I, the, the the lady who took us out to the field pregame she just started there two months ago and I said so I've been in this stadium more than you have <laughs> because my brother played twice there in Gator Bowls when he was at West Virginia there you go and um and it was just it looks it looks so they've nice. done a job they really oh, have they and, have but it was a how about a, those big screens? Oh, oh unbelievable. Unbelievable. And 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 the the you know the pixels. I mean the the def, the high definition on those big screens is crazy. It's crazy. It is. And I've been to Jerry's world, and that, I mean that was yeah, but as far as an outdoor stadium, that that's yep. unbelievable. But I so I I ended up I was coming back just as Jamar they was making the throw to Jamar, and I because I was trying to record some big plays here in the game on my phone. And so I got him, got him go, basically in the end zone. There you go. And uh, but Jamar Chase, 149 yards. But the player that I thought early on that kind of set the tone of what they could do was it was great to see T Higgins back on the field. Three catches, 36 yards. Uh, especially that first touchdown uh, Joe Mixon had. He had a catch in, in that that drive. It was so good to see the the trio back on the field. And um, and then, but what can you say, Jamar Chase? Oh, he's, just a, a f unbelievable talent. He is. I mean, he's got such strong hands. I mean, it, it, when he, he gets the football in his hands, boy, he has got a grip on him. 
And he's like a running back. He's hard to knock off his feet. He has unbelievable contact balance. And his lower body is so strong. When you see Jamar Chase in shorts, look at the quads, the hamstrings, the calves. His legs are unbelievably strong. He, he's strong everywhere. I mean, he's just flat out put together. And he made, he made a bunch of plays. I got to the stadium early and, and was sitting down in the Bengals uh, bench area with a couple of coaches and players and watching T Higgins do his pre pregame warm up, And he goes out there and uh coach has tennis balls and, and just lasering the focus down to this little tennis ball and run routes and we'll throw him the tennis ball and, uh, and, and, and make plays on it. And I'm watching T move and I'm look at the size of this guy, six, four legit two twenty. I mean, and it's like, man, he, he looks like, when, when he's operating against these smaller defensive backs, he looks like Kevin Durant, a seven footer making, you know, taking the ball out in, in three point land against little guards and making shots, just size mismatches. I mean, T Higgins creates problems for defensive football teams, for defensive coordinators. And when T Higgins is back and you have the trio and the tight ends played well, the tight ends, I got to give Drew Sample a lot of credit for the dirty work that guy did. I mean, he is, they, they went max protection quite a bit. They went with tight end, you know, they had the five offensive linemen, they'd have a tight end and they'd have a back. They went with six and seven man protections pretty often. And a lot of times it was Drew Sample in there doing all the dirty work on blitz pickup, doing uh, dirty work at the uh, end of the line of scrimmage, setting the edge in the running game. And I don't think he gets quite enough credit uh, for what he does for the football game. Mitch Wilcox, all of them. All the tight ends, you know, it's it's uh, <laughs> they'll they'll catch the football uh, when given the opportunity. Hudson had a 24 yard reception. He had four catches for 35 yards. Wilcox had one for 12. Sample had one for 11. But it's not just what they did in the passing game; it's what they did protecting the quarterback in the passing game, not what they did necessarily as receivers. But man, they're they are blue collar, and they don't mind getting down and dirty and doing whatever it takes to help their football team win games. I, I really res respect the tight end group as a whole. You know, I th I th I, you and I, we look at things as small things in a game. And the one thing I noticed was on defensive side of the football, is there a better guy that sets the edge than Sam Hubbard <laughs> against the run? No, he's that's that's the one – that's something that uh, is very underrated that that is, isn't appreciated. I, it is amongst the Bengals coaches and teammates and – Sam Hubbard plays the run uh, as well. He's as good a defensive end against the run as there is in the National Football League, in my estimation. And he he does. He sets a he sets a mean edge. He's he's really good. The other guy that makes plays is Mike Hilton. I mean, Mike Hilton will <laughs> the 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 big hit that DJ Turner had. He brought the wood. The guy who consumed two blockers and split that double team and set DJ Turner up where he was untouched free runner to make that hit Mike Hilton Mike Hilton would have made that tackle but because he had to work his way through two blockers and there they are doubling little Mike Hilton out there in the slot and and DJ Turner goes and makes that big time smash hit and that that set the tone I thought during the course of the week uh Zach Taylor uh was brilliant he said uh, I asked him in, in the press I said coach what about this Jacksonville Jaguar defense fourth in the NFL stopping the run I mean he goes, you know, they're playing with violence. They're, they play, they're a violent football team with their defensive front. So after the game, I said, coach, you know, you were talking about the violence of the Jacksonville Jaguars and you ran the ball for over 150 yards against them. And he goes, he smiled and he started answering. And he goes, you know, sometimes you make statements at press conferences for your football team. I was making a statement for my football team. This is what I expect us to be. I want them to match it. They not only matched it, they were the more physical football team on that football field, in my estimation, all night long, and that's saying something. Dave, let me ask you this, because you mentioned D.J. Turner. You start looking at the youth of this team, especially on the defensive side of the ball, the way they've addressed the draft the last couple of years, the D.J. Turner, Dax Hill, uh, even a guy like Jordan Battle. Yep. And, you know, you start seeing these young guys, and you start seeing them getting their more reps – you start seeing the speed, and you, that hit was on freaking believable. And, they, and I saw that on the, those those boards you talked yeah. about, video boards. You went, oh my goodness! Oh, yeah. You know that was woo. That was big. That was um, big. But I mean, it, it was just you have to be excited to see that the youth of this team, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Nothing against the guys that left, 
But, I mean, that is setting the stage for this defense to have some very, very top-level players this the rest of the season and going forward. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the veteran safeties that moved on, um, you know, the communication part of it, a, a lot of times the, the one thing you don't want to have on the back end of a defense is silence. You want to have communication. You want to have over-communication. You don't want to have, you know, young guys – that aren't sure, so they're not communicating anything. If you're not sure, still communicate something so everybody's on the same page. If you're going to make a mistake, make sure everybody's making the same mistake and everybody's not making different mistakes. I mean, and and that's coming along. And that, that's, I think, um, you know, that's that's not as big an issue as it was earlier this season for Louis Anaruma on some of these young defensive backs. But the, they can all run. Man, their recoverability speed, their ability to, you know, to – if you're beaten momentarily, come back and make a play on the football. DJ Turner, um, you know, he gets beaten and he comes back, makes a play on the ball, doesn't quit in the back line of the uh, end zone in a game and, and strips the ball out of there. Uh, he makes that big hit in the Jacksonville game. This guy reminds me of E.T., Eric Thomas. Eric Thomas came out of uh, out of Baylor as a sprinter. I mean, he was he was on their track team. And, you know, but he wasn't just – a track guy that could play football. He was a football player that could run. And that's what DJ Turner is. DJ Turner is a football player that can run. He ran a 426. He was the fastest guy at the combine. This guy can fly. And ET could fly. ET, you know, honed his skills and he became a Pro Bowl cornerback now. If I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you know, you know yeah, he's going to be a if he is, I think he's got potential to be a Pro Bowl cornerback like Eric Thomas. Uh, but man, DJ Turner, he's got a Big skill set, tremendous skill set, and he's he's getting better and better every single week. And I know from experience, and a lot of guys that I talked to, and then I felt it myself from year one to year two. Whew, it's like night and day, man. You know, it's you, you bank all your experiences from year one. You have an off season to you know uh, go back and and learn from your mistakes, and then you come out year two. A lot of times, that's the biggest improvement. Like I said, you're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. We're actually coming from the First Star Logistics studios. Unfortunately, we did not do a call post-game Monday night uh, because I was actually in Jacksonville. As I said, we had a chance to stay at the First Star Logistics beach house. I, I hope they asked me to go back again because I I, <laughs> I, I I told somebody the other day, I was like, um, the dog missed me. I think the wife did miss me. But, <laughs> That, that that trip staying down there and the people we got to do it with on our first star logistics media team was it was great and I appreciate everything they did allowing me to go and experience that and as you know I, I I've covered a lot of games on the college side and the high school side over the years but uh, the the NFL atmosphere can be some of the best you will see in the game and it was definitely uh, down in Jacksonville and like I said kudos to all the Bengals fans that made that trip yep because uh, in, in the game and, and then. The team, you saw a team that, you know, can take that game and build on it and more confidence to the Jake Brownies, more confidence as the offensive line, more confidence in the running game. Uh, things that I think after the last few weeks after Joe went down, people's like, season's over. Let's start thinking about the draft. Right. Um, why do we want to win? Uh, they're still in this hunt because the weekend provided opportunities with teams losing that keeps the Bengals in this hunt now going forward. So Colts are next. What do you see as we close this out as far as the Indianapolis Colts and the Bengals? I know we had Jimmy Burrow on. That'll be on in the trenches this week. And uh, little ties there between some of the quarterback play between Jake Browning and Minshaw for the Colts. Minshew, yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's going to be uh, – th this is an important game. It is. You know, I mean, uh, Minshew – uh, and Browning were both uh, participants in the Apple Cup uh, in, in the Pac-12, Washington, Washington State. In 2018, Jake Browning was the quarterback for the 16th-ranked Washington Huskies, and uh, Mid Minshew was the quarterback for, I, th I believe it was the 7th-ranked Washington State football team. It was 7th-ranked, and Washington upset him 28-15. to Jake Browning gets the victory in the Apple Cup in 2018, so these guys... Have, uh, have have played against each other before, and uh, Gardner Minshew is is a 
pretty good backup quarterback. I mean, he's got the Indianapolis Colts playing at a, at a pretty good level. And obviously Jake Browning's had it. He had a record setting game in his second NFL start. So it's, you look at, you look at the remaining schedule for these football teams, um, the Indianapolis Colts, they've got to, they still have to play the Pittsburgh Steelers after they play the Bengals and the Steelers have injuries at the quarterback position. So, I mean, if the Bengals can beat the Colts and the Colts do a favor to the Cincinnati Bengals and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, there you go. I mean, the Jacksonville Jaguars, unfortunately, how long, not only did they lose the football game, how long did they lose their starting quarterback? And unfortunately, they, they, they've got a couple of uh, AFC North teams left on their schedule. Uh, the Bengals, everybody they play, Indianapolis, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Cleveland, everybody is still alive. They're, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, they're all playoff teams. But I'll guarantee you one thing, these teams that are remaining on the schedule for the Cincinnati Bengals, they're going to look at the tape of what the Bengals did with the Jacksonville Jaguars and say, oh, boy, you know, it's, this, this is not going to be a just throw your socks and uniform on and go out there and play. These guys are legit. So will the Bengals do enough to get into the playoffs? They very well could. Will they knock somebody out of the playoffs? Hell yeah. They're going to knock somebody and maybe more than one team out of the playoffs as the season unwinds because the way they played against the Jacksonville Jaguars, <laughs> the Jaguars go into that football game eight and three. They're not eight and three any longer. And that's the amazing thing to me, Dave, all four of the losses now at home at that stadium, the Jaguars undefeated on the road and they've lost four home football games. That's mind boggling to me with the sport they have down there in that stadium. But that's the National Football League, and uh, I'm telling you, the Bengals, the Bengals are going to be a snoot fool for anybody down the stretch. And defensively, was it a masterpiece? No. Did they make plays when they needed to make plays that influenced the outcome of the football game? Hell yes. That's got to continue too. That was a very good football team, no so, doubt. I mean, that's it, a great offense. That uh, when Trevor Lawrence went down, you, you you know, here we're hearing high ankle sprain. Don't know, and, and you, we've talked about high ankle sprains before, yeah, because we know guys who've had them from the Bengals. We that have missed time, um, but from his reaction when he won, guys taking a knee. I mean, Trey Hendrickson, DJ Reader came. Yeah. Out. I mean, yeah. guys were concern because the way he responded yeah pounding his fist on the ground throwing, throwing his helmet, his helmet yep. you would think oh man they're gonna have to cart him off and he, i mean to get him just getting the sidelines he could not put weight on that well high ankle sprain is the tibia and fibula the two bones in your leg that attach right at the ankle they split they pull apart and all the soft tissue in there ligaments tendons all can be damaged there's there's different severities of the high ankle sprain and now they have this procedure where they, they surgically expedite the healing process. Somebody just had high ankle sprain surgery. I can't remember which quarterback it was or running back or whoever it was, just had high ankle sprain surgery trying to come back sooner. Um, so the severity of the high ankle sprain that he suffered and will he have surgery to expedite his return? All those things are uh, unknown at this point in time, but it's unbelievable. I mean, it, there's I know there were 50 quarterbacks started a game in the National Football League like two weeks ago. It was already up to the number 50. I don't know what the number is going to be <clears throat> by the time this season ends, but it's going to be astronomical. Crazy. Well, Dave, I, kn I know you have a busy day, <laughs> short week because yeah. of the Monday night game. So yep. uh, I appreciate you taking time because I do. I enjoy our call every post game, no matter if it's a five minute call or a 20 minute call, depending on if it's a way or home game and you have to get on a bus and away game. And I missed it. And uh, we was driving back from Jacksonville to Melbourne to the First Star Logistics Beach House. I told guys, I said, I feel naked because I didn't have my call with that. <laughs> and uh, because I, I do enjoy those and getting your insights, especially right after the game and, and the emotions of calling a game for you and, and what you see. So appreciate you taking the time today uh, out of your busy schedule to, to put this together. And again, I want to tell everybody, make sure you, you, you follow Lapham on Twitter. Uh, you make sure you follow Dave Lapham in the trenches on YouTube and also the first star media group page on YouTube as well, where you have Joe Goodberry and Malik Wright and a lot of other content. We put a lot of content up from uh, down at the beach house uh, when we were down there and uh, Joe Goodberry, all the people that want to predicted against the Bengals winning against Jacksonville. 
I was there when Joe Goodberry, he recorded the Bengals were going to win on an Evan McPherson kick. How about it? And so at the gun, at the gun, money and, Mac is money again. Yeah. And, and so, but uh, make sure you're following everything as far as first star media group, Dave Lapham, um, make sure you're taking part first star. Dave, we say this every time that we're together, first star logistics, has been doing this giveaway all season long. We've seen the prizes. Nice. These, They're the nice. Jukebox, PS5s. Yeah. I mean. High class. Yeah. And there's more to come. Make sure you're taking part in that because. Um, Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, we want to. <laughs> We're not allowed to. But uh, we, we always, we want to thank them. We can't thank them enough what we do. We, I mean, we can't say too much. We got some big news coming in a, probably another month, two months is what we're being told uh, about our studio. Mm. And um, so I won't go no further than that. But uh, it's going to be uh, very exciting, as we hope the rest of this Cincinnati Bengals season is. So, everyone, thank you for being with us all the time on In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. This was Dave Burke. Dave, I'll let you close it out, and uh, we'll get out here and let you get back to work. Yeah, I just I just want to one more time uh, thank all the fans that traveled down to Jacksonville. It was impressive. And believe you me when I tell you, the players noticed. The players were talking about it. The coaches were talking about it. Don't think that it's not going, that, that your efforts aren't appreciated and aren't, aren't uh, noticed and are taken for granted. They're not. The players and coaches couldn't believe it. Could not believe the response down there. And it was, I'm not saying the reason they won the football game, but when you're checking boxes, it's one of them. It's one of the reasons. It puts you over the top, gets you ready to play the game on game day when you see all the support down there in Jacksonville from Cincinnati. It was big. And uh, the more you can do it, the better off the team's going to play on the road. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you're staying with In the Trenches this week. We have great guest Jimmy Burrow talking about the injury to Joe Burrow, yep. recovery, and so forth. Peter King, who's yes. one of the best in the business. And Dave Lapham will have his keys, maybe even some other surprise guests we're working on. And uh, But you want to stay tuned because it's going to be another big game Sunday, 1 o'clock kickoff at Paycor Stadium as the Indiana and Indianapolis Colts come to town looking to keep the Bengals from – making a run at this playoffs. So thanks everybody for being with us. And uh, we'll have our post game call as we normally do Dave Sunday after another Bengals win. There you go. Knock the Colts back to Indianapolis and let's talk about it. We look forward to another year of in the trenches presented by first star logistics, but we wanted to give you some big news this season. You'll find our interviews and keys to Bengals victory on in the trenches in the first star media group, YouTube channel, along with our growing team of Joe Goodbury's Bengals on the brain and Malik Wright's State of the Jungle. Also, the great folks at First Star Logistics have big plans this season with special giveaways each week the Bengals play. So be sure to visit both channels and our social media pages to stay updated on all giveaways and the latest news on the Bengals. So be sure to subscribe to the First Star Media Group YouTube channel as after this season, it'll become the channel that will host all our content.